Now some list specific functions. So lists are general purpose. They're the most widely used by far data structure in Python. They grow and shrink in size as needed, so you don't have to determine what size of list you want. And they are of the sequence type, so all of the above functions all apply for lists. And they're sortable. We're able to sort a list and keep it in sorted order. So first some constructors. How do we make a new list? So we can say x equals list and then uh, parentheses. Or we can say y equals in square brackets. We can put whatever items we want. And here in this example, we can actually see that we can have a mixed bag of data types here. So we have a string, a numeric or integer type. This is another string, and this is a floating point type. So we can mix data types in one list as much as we want. And then if we create a tuple, tuple1 equals 1020, we can convert that to a list. So we can get a list from a tuple just by passing in a tuple as an argument to this list constructor. List comprehensions. Uh, I have another video actually that covers this in detail. So if you're interested in list comprehensions, it's a really cool feature of Python, and I encourage you to watch that video. But here, just in brief, a equals m for m in range 8. So the range function basically returns 0 through 7 in series. And it's going to create a new list with each one of those values in it and assign it to a. So we get 0 through 7 in this list. And then we can say b equals i squared for i in range 10. Now here we've added in two other things that we didn't have in the first example. One is an if. If i is greater than 4. Wow, so we're only looking at i is greater than 4, and that's in range 10. So it's basically 5 through 9. And it's going to square each item before it adds it to the list. So we get 5 through 9 added to this list, but it's adding the square of it. So that's pretty cool. And there's so much more stuff you can go with list comprehensions. It's a really powerful feature for creating lists in Python. OK, delete. You can delete a list, or you can delete a single item in a list. So if we have this list x here, and we want to delete the one-th item, this is an index. It's going to delete the 3. And you can see in this printout, there's no 3 left. And then if we delete the entire list, we just do del x. And that deletes x, so x no longer exists. We can append items to a list using the append function. If we have a list x and we want to append a 7 to it, we can do x.append7, and it adds it onto the tail end of the list. Extend will append a sequence to a list. So if x equals this list and y equals 12 and 13, x.extend y. So in other words, it's going to extend list x with the elements that are contained in y. So we print this out. It's basically the same thing as adding. We could also use the plus function if we wanted to. Insert inserts an item at a given index. So lists are ordered, mind you. So if we want to put an item in the middle of the list or at a specific location in the list, this enables us to do that. x.insert1, 7. So we're inserting a 7 at the 1th position right after the 5. And then when we print x, we get 5, 7, 3, 8, 6. You can see the 7 in the first position there. And then if we x insert 1 am, we can even insert another list as an item in this list. So we inserted it in the same position, the 1th position, but a, a sublist with a and m in it. And you can see the line printed out here. So you can have a list within a list. Pop pops the last item off of a list and returns that item. So if we have this list and we x pop, we pop off the 6, which is the last item on the list. With this function, a list can function very similar to a stack or a queue. However, there is no push function. Remove allows you to remove the first instance of an item. So if there's a specific item you want to remove, we want to remove a 3 from this list. It's going to find the first 3 it can, and then we'll remove that. So here we remove the 3 that's between the 5 and the 8. Reverse will reverse the order of a list. It is an in-place sort, meaning it changes the original list. So we do x.reverse, and then x is the new reversed order. So we don't have to say x equals x.reverse. 
Now our in place sort is just sort. You might remember we did up above a sort function called sorted that is not in place. It returns a new list. If you use sort, it's an in place sort. So if we do x dot sort, it actually changes the original list and puts it in sorted order. Now let's talk about tuples. A lot of other programming languages don't have tuples. Tuples are immutable, which means they can't be added or changed once the tuple is created. It's useful for fixed data. So if you don't need to make any changes to it, it's very handy. These are much faster than lists, so if you need to find an item in a tuple or retrieve an item, it's very quick for that. And it's a sequence type, so you can still use a lot of the functions that we, used, we defined up above. So the constructor for creating a new tuple is just uh, the parentheses. So x equals empty parentheses gives you an empty tuple. x equals parentheses with 1, 2, 3 in it gives you a 1, 2, 3 tuple. And actually, what's interesting in Python, you don't even need the parentheses. You can just put 1, 2, 3, and it will still create a tuple. Now, can you just put one item and create a tuple? Yes, you can if you put a comma after it. The comma tells Python that, yeah, this is not a value 2. It's not an integer. I want to create a tuple with a 2 in it. So it's going to create a one item tuple. And you can see here the output. When we print x and type of x, we get a tuple with just 2 in it. And the class is tuple. And then if we create a list with 2, 4, and 6 in it, and we pass that in as an argument to tuple constructor, we can create a new tuple and assign that to x. Now you remember up above, we can pass a tuple in and convert it to a list using the same way. Tuples are immutable, but member objects may be mutable. So one of the items within a tuple could be a list. So you, you could add or change elements in that list if it's an element of the tuple. So here we have x equals tuple with 1, 2, 3. We're not able to delete an item. We're not able to change an item. It's not going to let us. It's going to give you an error. But if, an, if we have a tuple where the first item is a list with 1 and 2 in it, and then we want to delete one of those items, we want to delete the 2, let's say. Yeah, we can do that. We can delete y of 0 of 1. So 0 gives us this list. And then 1 gives us the second item in the list. And so we print out y, we can see that the 2 is deleted. So items within a tuple are not necessarily immutable, but the tuple itself is immutable. 